Hi guys, welcome to your first set of videos for Biology 224 Laboratory. My name is TJ, I am one of the AMP lab instructors here on campus. And today we're going to be going over a brief introduction into blood typing, like the composition of blood, how you guys are going to do your own experiment in the lab and all that good stuff. And we're going to get started by talking about the different blood types. We have type A, B, AB, and O blood types. So four main generic blood types, but then once you throw an RH factor, there are eight, and we'll get into that in just a second. On all your blood cells, you have a certain cell marker that allows your body to recognize it as that specific blood type called antigens. So for example, if you have type A blood, you are going to have A antigen on your cell surface. If you have type B blood, you are going to have the B antigen on your cell surface. If you have type AB blood, you are going to have both. So you're going to have A and B antigen on your cell surface. And type O blood is going to have no antigens. This is what we often refer to as naked blood. So, the antigens are how we identify what the blood cell's type is specifically, and now we're going to get into the antibodies that are present in that blood. If you have type A blood, you would not want type A antibodies because then those antibodies would attack those cells, and you don't want your own antibodies attacking your blood. So type A blood is going to have type B antibodies. It's going to be the exact inverse for type B blood. We wouldn't want type B antibodies in B blood. All our antibodies would just attack the blood and cause an agglutination, which we would not want. So type B blood is going to have type A antibodies. Take a second here and think about type AB and type O blood and think about maybe what kinds of antibodies you would expect to find in each of those blood plasma. So pause the video here real quick and take a second and think about it. All right, <clears throat> hopefully you guys were able to come to the conclusion that type AB blood is gonna have no antibodies. We wouldn't want type A or type B antibodies in our blood, otherwise it would attack our red blood cells, causing agglutination, which we do not want. And then type O blood is going to have both types of antibodies, so type A and type B antibodies. So this is a brief description into just kind of the antigen-antibody relationships that we see in blood, but there's another factor that we have to take into account, and that is RH factor. So you guys have probably heard, like, for example, I'm O negative blood. That means that I do not have RH antigen on my blood cell. So we're just going to draw another blood cell real quick. I'm O negative, which means I have no antigens, and it also means I have no RH factor. <clears throat> now take another blood cell, say O positive. Also is going to have no antigen on it, but is going to have RH factor present. So RH is what determines whether your blood is going to be positive or negative, whether you have that antigen or not. The antibody relationship is kind of similar to blood, but there's a little uh, catch-22 to it with the RH factor. So if you were born with O negative blood, assuming that you've never had an exposure to any type of positive blood, you would not have antibodies. So O negative blood, for example, no antibodies, unless you have an exposure. So what that means is, one of the most common examples, one that Dr. Hollander is going to talk a lot about in lecture, is uh, the interactions between uh, a fetus and the mother in the womb. Say a woman gives birth, there's a little bit of hemorrhaging, there's some blood swapping. Uh, there could be a potential for antibodies to develop 
to fight RH factor in that case. Or say you get a blood transfusion that went wrong, which hopefully would never happen, but if it did, as long as it's your first time getting an improper blood transfusion, you're going to develop antibodies that first time, and then from there on out, you would see a reaction if you had another bad transfusion or got exposure to blood that does not match your type. So RH factor, that negative, there's not any antibodies just casually present at birth. You have to develop them, at, you have to develop them in some way or other. For the purposes of your worksheet and kind of just in life in general, I guess, always assume that a negative blood type is going to have the antibodies. So when you guys fill out your worksheet in lab today, just assume that a negative blood type is going to have RH antibodies and it's probably just best practice <clears throat> for life and all that. So hopefully this was a good introduction into blood typing. Dr. Hollander will talk a lot more about this in her lecture and your TA can help you throughout lab. Take a look at the blood typing experiment video that you guys have on web campus so that when you come into lab, you're gonna be completely ready to perform that experiment on your own. And good luck guys.